Hey, if you're vegan or vegetarian and want to reap all the benefits from the ketogenic diet, in this video, I'll show you how. Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And guys, I love this video because I get this question all the time, but I wanted to make sure I did my research first, and that is if you're vegan or vegetarian, can you do the ketogenic diet and will it benefit you? And the answer is absolutely yes. So in this video, you want to make sure you watch to the end. And if you like what we're talking about, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you click that little bell notification so you get notified anytime I do a video. And also too, if you wanna take all the guesswork out of how to do the ketogenic diet, and really from beginning to end, know how to meal plan, know how to shop, your food guide, what to eat, you want inspiration and motivation, check out my keto course. I'll put the link down below. I think you'll find it is absolutely amazing. And like I said, it'll take all the guesswork out. And if you're just looking for a good cookbook, I've got a great one, it's called KISS Keto is Super Simple, where the recipes are simple, clean, and absolutely delicious and healthy. So check that one out too. I'll put the link down below for that. So let's go ahead and get started with the Vegan Keto Guide. Well guys, like I said, this is a question I get all the time because so many of you out there really want to get the benefits of the ketogenic diet, which include, of course, cognitive function, really good clarity in your brain. You want to make sure you're losing weight, although a lot of people who are vegan or vegetarian already are in good shape when it comes to weight loss. Or maybe you just want to get body composition changes. Maybe you want to start to burn fat for fuel and less carbs. Maybe you've been thinking as a vegan or vegetarian, you've been eating too many grains and you want to get away from that and really clean it up and start burning fat for fuel. Maybe you have PCOS or some other type of disease process going on and you want to change from that. Or maybe your hormones are really just out of whack and you want to get in better shape there too. Well, like I said, the ketogenic diet has so many amazing health benefits. So let's jump right on in on how to do it. Well, first off, the typical ketogenic diet really works in the way you're eating a lot more fats, moderate protein, and low carbs, okay? So high fats, moderate protein and low carbs. That's your typical ketogenic diet. Now, as you can see here, there's some salmon and some other things like eggs and cheese and so on. So obviously, this is not the type of diet that you're gonna do, so we're gonna show you the modifications to it. You wanna make sure, even if you are vegan or vegetarian, you wanna make sure to get into ketosis, you need to be in the range of 20 to 50 grams of carbs per day. Really, that's about it. Okay, some of you can get away with a little bit more than that, but if you really want to ensure your success, stick to about 20 to 50 grams a day. But like I said, you're gonna to need to make changes because you can't have some of these food groups, as you well know. So when it comes to vegetarians or people who are vegan, you wanna make sure that you get into ketosis by consuming high fat, plant-based products like coconut oil, avocados, seeds, and nuts. So these are gonna be your best choices when it comes to fats. But once again, we're gonna give you a complete food guide at the end too, so stay tuned, watch to the end, because I'm gonna be giving you the foods to eat and the foods to avoid. But this is really what you wanna focus on. So once again, these are all plant-based, they're fantastic sources of either polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturated fats, or saturated fats. So these are really all the great ones that you can have. Coconut oil, coconut uh, products itself, avocado, avocado oil, nuts and seeds, olive oil, all great choices when you're on the ketogenic diet and you're vegan or vegetarian. Now, foods to avoid completely, and I know I don't want to insult you, you probably don't need to have me go over this list with you, but just in case, some of the people out there, maybe you're new to being vegan or vegetarian, but these are really the ones you want to avoid. So when following a ketogenic diet, you must significantly reduce your carb intake and replace carbs with healthy fats and vegan sources of protein. So obviously these here are not the ones you want to have. So when it comes to meat, poultry, beef, turkey, things like that, obviously it's a no-go for you. Dairy, you want to stay away from that too. I guess the saying is, and I don't mean to insult anybody, if, if it had a face and a mother, you really don't want to have it. I, am I correct in that? Maybe give me a comment down below. I'm, I'm not vegan or vegetarian myself, so I apologize if I get the terminology a little bit wrong, but you want to stay away once again from these. Eggs, now you could be a lacto-ovo vegetarian, but I believe vegans, once again, correct me if I'm wrong, you're a lot more strict on this, so you would stay away from dairy products or eggs, but I think lacto-ovo vegetarians can have this. 
if you want it as a source. Seafood obviously is a no-go, and animal-based uh, ingredients such as whey protein, honey, and egg white protein, things like that are all things you want to avoid. So. What are the things that you also want to maybe significantly reduce? Now, these are the ones that are not going to be as obvious to you because these are things that have been maybe a main staple in your diet really all your life. So things to significantly reduce are going to be grains and starches. Now, I know you're thinking, well, wait, I have to get my fiber. I can't do that. I need my bread. I need my grains. I need my cereal, things like that. But guys, the problem is you'll never get into ketosis if you're consuming these because they're way, way too high in carbs. So things like your bread, baked goods, rice, pasta, and grains are all a no-go. You need to stay away from that. Even though it's vegan, even though it's vegetarian, you need to stay away from it if you want to reap all the benefits of the ketogenic diet and get, in, get into ketosis where you're burning fats for fuel rather than sugars. If you're consuming these and you're keeping your insulin high all the time and your blood sugar levels high, you are never going to get into ketosis. I can promise you that. Things like sugary drinks, sweet tea, soda, smoothies, sports drinks, coconut, uh, chocolate milk, you want to avoid these types of things too. Stay away from sweeteners, okay? Sweeteners are a no-go. I know they might be vegetarian or they might be vegan, but you want to stay away from it. So obviously your sugars, your brown sugars, your white sugars, your agave nectar, and your maple syrup. Those are all no-goes. Once again, even though they're plant-based, they are a no-go because it will keep your blood sugar levels too high. You will never get into ketosis. Starchy vegetables. Now, I know this is a big one because you're thinking, but Dr. Nick, I love my sweet potatoes, and I do too, but you really can't have them on a ketogenic diet. Now, once you get into ketosis and your body gets good at being able to go from, as I say, a hybrid car from burning sugars and also burning fats for fuel and be able to cycle back and forth, you can then add in things like your starchy vegetables, like your sweet potatoes and things like that. But in the beginning, if you want to get into ketosis, these are a no-go. You cannot have sweet potatoes, winter squash, beets, or peas because they're too high in sugars. Also to beans and legumes, and I know you're thinking, but Dr. Nick, there goes my protein source. Well, we're going to talk about that at the end, but know this, beans especially tend to have high levels of carbohydrates. In fact, people would think, no, they're a great source of protein, which they are. They're a good source of protein, but they are higher in carbs than they are protein. Look it up yourself and you'll find that it's going to keep you from getting into ketosis. Now, once again, I'm going to give you some plant-based protein sources where we're going to see them, but I want to use them sparingly, okay? So watch out for the black beans, chickpeas, and kidney beans. Now, what also do you need to significantly reduce? Fruits. Now, once again, I know you're thinking, but Dr. Nick, now you're taking away everything. I can't have fruits. Well, you can't have your sweet fruits. Things like, you know, apples or things like uh, bananas, they're going to be very high in sugars. So you want to limit it. Small portions, but you want to have berries. Berries are going to be your best choice. Berries like blackberry, raspberry, and strawberries are always going to be okay. Once again, I did a video on this on the kind of fruits that you can have on a ketogenic diet, check that video out right on my uh, YouTube channel and you can see what kind of fruits you can have. You wanna stay away from high carb alcoholic beverages. Now your mixed drinks, okay, those are typically gonna be the worst. So those are the ones that can have the highest amounts of sugars, the ones that you use, you know, mixes for and things like that. Now I know some of you are saying, well, what about if I just have my clean drinks like vodka or scotch or gin? I've heard the, the white ones or the clear ones are going to be the best. Now, that is true. They're going to be lower in carbs. And I did a video on this too, on which alcohols are safer to have on the ketogenic diet. But remember this, this is a big factor. Your body, whenever you take in alcohol, your body triages. And what that means is it's going to look at it and say, okay, what do I need to do here first? Well, oh, I need to detoxify first. So your liver is going to go into detoxification mode. It's going to stop fat burning mode. So if you do drink alcohol, know this, you're going to stop burning fat because your body, your liver specifically will look at it and say, no, we need to burn this, this, these alcohols up. We need to get them out. We need to detox before we can burn fats for fuel. So know that even though it's low carb, you're still going to stop fat burning in its tracks high carb sauces, things like that. Condiments, barbecue sauces are notoriously high in sugars. Just read the label. I know you're thinking, but there's no fat in it. It's not about the fat, it's about the sugar. Remember, the ketogenic diet is all about the sugar. If your sugar's too high, you won't burn fat. So you want the carbs really low, fats really high, proteins moderate. 
You want to stay away from low-fat diet foods. They also tend to be high in added sugars, okay? Or really, even worse than that, artificial sweeteners. So you want to stay away from your Splendas, your Sucralose, things like that, your, your NutraSweets, whatever's in a yellow, pink, or blue packet, stay away from. Also, too, highly processed foods, because anytime something comes in with a package and it's got a barcode on it, it's not a good thing. So you want to avoid that. Stay away from that and eat whole foods, which I know if you tend to be, you know, obviously more vegan, you're going to be eating a lot more whole foods. So what foods can you eat? Okay, let's, let's get to that, Dr. Nick. What can I eat here? Okay, we're getting to it. First and foremost, coconut products are always going to be amazing. So any kind of coconut products, as long as it's unsweetened. So don't get the, the coconut shaved flakes and things like that that are sweetened because those are going to be a no-go. But all full fat coconut milk, yes, you want all the fat in it. Even though it's saturated, that's okay. Saturated fat's not bad. I did a video on that. Check it out where I talked about the 10 benefits of saturated fat. You have to have it in your diet. In fact, if it wasn't the case, God would not have made breast milk with saturated fat in it, okay? So you have to have saturated fat. Coconut cream, unsweetened coconut. I have coconut all the time. Coconut oil, coconut cream, coconut milk. I make a matcha latte that's to die for where I put, you know, of course, uh, the matcha green tea in a blender with some coconut milk, a little bit of low-carb sweetener, and it is unbelievable. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite things to have at night. Oils, olive oil, nut oils, coconut oil, MCT oil, avocado oil, macadamia nut oil, walnut oil. These are all good oils to have. Oils are great. As long as they're not vegetable oils, you want to avoid the vegetable oils because they tend to be very rancid because they use a lot of chemicals to uh, extract the oil from the nuts and the seeds. So stay away from nut and seed oils. They're not going to be good. And once again, I did a video on that too. You can check that one out. Pumpkin seeds are good. Macadamia nuts, like I said. Nut and seed butters are fantastic. Those are also great. So peanut butter, better yet use Valencia peanuts. They're going to be a lot better for you because remember the peanuts are grown underground and the skin or the shell, I should say, is very porous. So they tend to get moldy. So when a child has a, a nut allergy or a peanut allergy, it's typically not an allergy to the peanut. It's, a, it's to the mold that's on the peanut. So use Valencia peanuts. They're going to be your best bet. Almond butter's fantastic. And guys, if you can get all this raw, even better. Don't get roasted nut butters. It's better if it's raw, of course, because you're saving all those vital enzymes, nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. Sunflower butter and cashew butter are fantastic. Okay, non-starchy vegetables, right? So this is the ones you can have. So these are things like your Brussels sprouts, your zucchini, leafy green vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, peppers, mushrooms, things like that. These are your non-starchy vegetables that are going to be fine all day long to eat, okay? Celery, things like that too. More foods to eat, vegan protein sources. Now I'm going to get to this on the next slide, so don't go away. Stick around because I'm going to give you some ideas for vegan uh, protein sources, but those are all good, but just uh, full-fat tofu and tempeh are good. Uh, vegan full-fat dairy, so coconut yogurt, okay, coconut yogurt, coconut kefir, they're all going to be good. Vegan butter, cashew cheese, uh, vegan cream cheese, things like that. And you know all the sources. Like I said, I'm not vegan myself, but I know you know where to find a lot of these vegan cheeses to use. Avocados, I mean, I can't say enough about avocados. They're probably one of the most perfect foods on the planet. In fact, I was reading today, if I could possibly grow an avocado tree in Georgia, that's where I live, uh, I don't know if I can because the temperature is not that good, but supposedly certain avocados are actually better in cooler temperatures. So we're not cool, but we're, we do have cold season at the, uh, in, in the uh, winter. But berries are all good, bluebirds, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries. They can be enjoyed, but once again, don't eat a whole tub of it, okay? Because it will add up. Uh, condiments, nutritional yeast is a fantastic one. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Very high in protein, okay? It's basically made from bacteria, and it's great for cheeses. It has a nice cheesy taste to it, so you can put it on popcorn. I put it on my eggs, fantastic for this. Fresh herbs, lemon juice, salt and pepper, and spices are all fair game. Now, what are the vegan protein sources I was talking about? And once again, like I said, if you've already been on a vegan diet for a long time, a vegetarian diet, you know these sources as well or better than I do. But uh, seitan is a great one, and that's what they typically call wheat meat because it's basically made from the gluten 
of wheat, okay? So wheat has gluten in it, of course, we know that, but the gluten is the protein portion. And depending on how much gluten is in something, it depends on how you can make certain pastries and pizzas and things like that. So very high gluten things give something a lot of elasticity. So pizzas, when somebody's taking a pizza and throwing it up in the air and opening it up, that rubbery, that, that elasticity of it is from the gluten. That's where it gets it from. But so this, you can actually grill it. It actually has a tendency to look or feel like steak. So this is a good source. In fact, it's 25 grams of protein per 100 grams of seitan. So, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But, uh, so it's, it tends to be a great protein source. And once again, if you're looking for that kind of a meaty taste, if, if you're new to being vegan or vegetarian, this is gonna be a great source. Tofu, tempeh, and edamame, of course, are all from soybeans, young soybeans, so tend to be a very good source of whole protein. So this is a complete protein, and anywhere from 10 to 19 grams of protein per 100 grams of uh, tempeh, tofu, or edamame. Lentils are also a good source, okay? But once again, they're gonna be a little bit high in the starch too, but lentils are a good source, 18 grams per cooked cup. Uh, chickpeas and beans, once again, we talked about that earlier. You said, but no, no, beans weren't good. Beans have in moderation, just be careful. There's a, a, pro, a, a carbohydrate in it called anapodectin, and that one is a very high carbohydrate. And once again, like I said, beans typically are more than half of it is carbs. So you wanna watch out, use it sparingly. But these are about 15 grams per cooked cup. So once again, they're also a good source. So add it in, but maybe not make it your main source of protein. And as I said before, nutritional yeast, this is a great one. This is made from a deactivated yeast, and it's about eight grams per quarter cup. So if you take that and you kind of figure that out, not that you'd ever put this much on your food because it's gonna be really too intense in flavor, but if you multiply this out, this is a lot more than even the other ones. This is basically 32 grams per cup because it's eight grams per quarter cup. So it's a great source of protein. You're just not gonna eat a lot of it because you just sprinkle it on food. You're not eating a cup of it, but great source anyway. So guys, try these out once again. If you're vegan or vegetarian and you want to reap all the benefits of the ketogenic diet, you can do it, okay? Follow this guide. If you're looking for maybe a food guide, once again, check out my keto course. I'll put the link down below and that'll give you a food guide as to how to meal plan and things like that. So that way you can get all, once again, the greatest benefits from it. Well guys, I hope you got great information out of this. Try it out, let me know what you think. Let me have your comments down below. If you're already doing this and you are vegan or vegetarian, let me know if there's other things that we can let our viewers know about too. Maybe something I didn't touch on. Some of your tips and tricks that you do. So let me know those down in the comment below. Let me know what you thought about the video. Like I said, share it to people. And once again, don't go away. If you like this video, check out my other ones. I bet you'll love those too. Well guys, this is Dr. Nick. I love and appreciate you. I will see you on the next video. God bless.